defense contractors like you know SAIC and uh, Northrop and uh, Lockheed. All of them have these huge teams of proposal writers and managers and all this structure and everything. And small businesses, who do we have? Just us most of the time. Maybe a couple couple people on a team. Now with ChatGPT, that was the playing field, if you will. So especially for small businesses that are bidding against these teams of large defense contractors, this is a big advantage, and it's allowing you to build bids quicker with more accuracy and more insight. And ChatGPT also has plugins that I'll go over later that can build diagrams and even images. Right. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody see me? Can everybody see the presentation? All good. Okay. Uh, so I see a lot of friendly uh, names in here. A lot of customers are in here, which I love. I love connecting with our customers. I also see a lot of people uh, that I don't think I've ever met. A lot of, a lot of companies and, and names that I don't seem familiar to me. So welcome. It's good to meet you. Just want to thank everybody for attending. I hope you get a lot of value out of this. I put a lot of work into this topic. It's kind of a passion project of mine and it goes kind of deep into my history. Uh, AI was something that was kind of in its infant stages when I was in college and I didn't gravitate towards computer science. So I kind of dropped out of that. Um, but Nowadays, you don't really need that, which is uh, making this time pretty, pretty awesome. Let's go over to the agenda so we know what we're getting into today. I'm going to go over the basics of ChatGPT. I can't really assume that everybody here is an expert in it yet. It's still so new. Um, and I'm kind of expecting there to be some, some folks that use it a good bit, and some folks that maybe haven't ever used it at all. And then I'm going to try to kind of strike a good balance for everybody. Uh, but then in item three, there you're going to see ChatGPT as your robot assistant, or it's in all. So this isn't a perfect situation yet. Um, you can't just tell ChatGPT, you know, take this RFQ, write my proposal, make sure it wins. No, we're not there, of course. And I don't think we ever will be. There's always going to be that that uh, personal aspect and that professional uh, human intelligence that's going to have to come in. We're going to go over staging a bid project, which is just going to be, uh, you know, getting everything ready, um, using ChatGPT in that context. And then we're going to go into a little bit of writing the proposal and, and kind of getting that whole project uh, started um, kind of as a, as a, as a task list of tasks. And uh, also, you, ChatGPT as a writer is, you know, it's, it's a great writer, better than me. You know, why are we, why am I doing this uh, presentation? Um, the focus has always been to serve small businesses and really help small government contractors win more bids. Uh, the large, large ones kind of have, um, you know, so many advantages. Uh, myself coming from, you know, as far back as I can trace, four generations at least, uh, my family's been small business owners. Everything from, uh, you know, hires root beer, bottling to used car lots, security systems, anything that you could think of, you know, it's all over, we're all over the place. Now I'm doing government contracting. So um, my family going back is, is all small businesses and that's really who I'm here to serve. That's what I grew up around really. So it's in my blood. Uh, that's why we do this. That's that's why we help companies get into the GSA program. That's why we help with federal market. Um, so jumping right in, just kind of laying the foundation here. Um, I don't want to jump right into open up a, a proposal and, and jump right in um, without of course, going through um, kind of the, the stuff that I think is important for you to know. So what is ChatGPT? Let's start at the very beginning. It's a conversational AI model designed to understand and generate human-like text. So it can engage in detailed conversations and it answers a wide range of queries. So was, on a side note, it was, uh, all right. So back to this, ChatGPT was developed by a company called OpenAI. They worked on it for years really secretively and then they released it and then it just kind of changed the world. So um, the way that I, really frame, want to frame this. If you're coming into ChatGPT brand new and you're just kind of like, well, I don't understand. It's very confusing what it even is. Um, all you really need to think of it is like, think of it like a person who knows almost everything and they're really good at articulating answers. And when they're asked the right questions in the right way, which is called prompt engineering, then they produce amazing answers and can do a lot of your job for you. So very much a very good assistant. Think of your best assistant ever and then give them a, um, you know, photographic memory and, uh, uh, and make them insanely quick, like an actual computer or a robot. So um, also, did I mention that you can also feed it data and it becomes an instant expert on that data. So for example, an RFQ, you download an RFQ, 90 pages, uh, you could sit there and read it, you know, as I'm sure a lot of us have done, sat, sit down and read through an RFQ. It's really fun reading, right? Well, uh, you can feed it that, that PDF um, or in, in other formats right into ChatGPT. It'll become a, you know, basically it'll, memorize it, and then you can ask a question. So if you ask the right questions, and you learn how to have a good conversation with ChatGPT, it can be extremely supportive for you. So now that's kind of the bedrock foundation. We're gonna kind of take a step up now into the pro proposal writing setting. And here we go. 
So why use it in, the, in this setting? So competing to win requires using all the advantages that you have available to you. And ChatGPT is all of a sudden a very huge advantage, especially compared to uh, those giant teams of the defense contractors like you know, SAIC and, uh, and Northrop and uh, Lockheed. All of them have these huge teams of proposal writers and managers and all this structure and everything. And small businesses, what do we have? Just us most of the time, maybe a couple, couple people on a team. Or if we're kind of a medium sized business. But now with ChatGPT, uh, we have a lot of support that actually comes in and, and replaces a lot of your kind of levels the playing field, if you will. So, especially for small businesses that are bidding against these teams of large defense contractors, this is a big advantage. Uh, it's leveling the playing field, like I said, and it's allowing you to build, build bids quicker with more accuracy and more insight. And ChatGPT also has plugins that I'll go over later that can build diagrams and even images that can kind of help to uh, make your proposal a little bit more, uh, you know, brandish or, or a little bit more, uh, just have a better look and feel as you hand them over to the federal government, make a better impression. All right, so we're going to be going into just the basics here. So this is where I think even if you use ChatGPT pretty regularly, this is where you can, I, th I think some, some cool things that I've come across that I'm excited to, to share with you. So. Let's go over this role. So what is ChatGPT? It's your researcher and it's your copywriter. That's what ChatGPT is really, really good at. What's your role? You're the primary intelligent being. Uh, you're the specialist that's within your industry, uh, years, decades of experience, and um, that's who you are. So you bring what you bring, ChatGPT helps that by taking a lot of the uh, writing, researching, a lot of the, the menial tasks that, that you have to do and doing them for you. And instead of going, you know, instead of spending two hours doing research and building a plan, you can cut that down to probably about 20 to 30 minutes uh, and get exactly the same or even better than where you would have been before on your own. Um, so um, I'm not, <laughs> not with uh, OpenAI. I don't represent ChatGPT. Um, and I'm not even saying that so much for legal reasons. I think that's obvious, but I do recommend getting that $20 a month plan to get go up to the advanced uh, language model called GPT-4. Uh, if you're not doing that, it's night and day as far as the level of quality that it outputs. It's a little slower, um, but it's amazing. The 3.5 is good, but if you're going to be using this regularly, 20 bucks a month is nothing compared to the output that you'll get from it. And also, there's something I've learned as I've been using uh, ChatGPT for a while. Um, you don't want to inundate it with a million questions or even one really big question all at once. You a big part of what's called prompt engineering, I kind of alluded to that earlier, um, asking the right questions in the right way. Um, and a, a big part of that is understanding the limitations of, of ChatGPT because it, it doesn't output um, beyond, I want to say like 2,500 words or something like that. There's there's a limit. I'm, I'm probably wrong, very wrong there, but there is a limit. So if you ask it a really big question, its output isn't going to be very, very good if it has to give you a big answer because it's just going to be very generic. But if you take that big question and you chop it up into five little ones, what you're going to get are five very long, detailed, uh, topical responses directly to that. And when you kind of put those all together, uh, it can be really powerful. So conversational is the way to go. Bite-sized questions, very specific writing prompts. All right, so here's the good stuff. Here are the, here are the plugins. Uh, not long ago, a few months back, uh, they opened up uh, plugins as, as a thing. So uh, it used to just be conversational purely. And the data actually, um, the language model was only trained back to, I think, like August of 2021. So there was all the, a lot of stuff's happened since then. And it's nice to have it up to date. So these first two uh, actually connect to the internet, run kind of crawls, and pull data back. So uh, that allows you to have more recent information uh, when you need it. Um, worth mentioning, this just came out. Dolly is uh, the image generator for OpenAI. And if you want to make some really cool images, in fact, every image on this slideshow, I believe, except for the ones of our faces up above that I showed you, they're all generated using Dolly. Um, even the cover of, you know, the, the you can use it for really anything. Um, you'll, you'll see. Diagrams. So show me is a diagram generator and charts. It's very, very, very helpful. Um, you can, if, if you're ever using ChatGPT and you say, oh, it'd be so nice if this was organized in a, you know, in a, a brain map or some sort of, Really, any other way, you can say, organize this into a brain map and you know, just make sure that that diagram plugin is selected and it'll do that. And the same thing goes with graph constructor. Diagrams and graphs are different a little bit. So graph constructor can take data if you're working in data and take those numbers and generate a certain type of graph. So gosh, people still joining. This is awesome. Welcome everybody that's new. 
Uh, this is going to be recorded, just so you know. So whatever you missed, you'll uh, you'll get that in an email afterwards. All these all the resources in this video are going to also be coming to you afterwards as well. So don't worry about that. Um, oh, I got a question. Do you have to pay for each separately? No, no, that's the really cool thing. Um, you pay in order to use plugins. You do have to pay for the twenty dollars a month for GPT four. They don't work in three point five. Uh, but all the plugins are more or less free. Um, I've never had to pay for one. I use the heck out of many of them. Um, so I'm sure if you use one over and over and over every day, maybe you'll hit some sort of limit with them and they'll say, hey, you want to you throw us a couple shingles? Um, but I haven't come across any, anything like that, Caesar. Um, so yeah, here we go. So we are actually about to transition this presentation to uh, the good stuff. But before we get there, I'm just wanting, I just want to give you a nice little overview. So staging a bid project first, and then writing a proposal. That's kind of how the, how the process goes, right? You don't just start writing the proposal. You have to stage it and take in all of the RFQ data, and there's a lot of it. So let's jump right in, preparing. So here's kind of what I do, um, what, I, what I kind of see as the initial stage. So you're surveying an RFQ to pull the important details and start the project planning. You know, I don't know what everybody does. Maybe you have a Word document or a spreadsheet, and you just get a checklist going. Um, if you're smart, um, and you've been doing this a while, I'm sure you have some um, I'm sure you have some really good systems and you reuse sheets and uh, you know you have a, kind of a library that you go to and, and automates the process a little bit for you. Um, a couple of questions, I'll, I'll get to those in a minute. Um, like I said before, same conversational and I like to think of it as like a cascade of small prompts. And you'll kind of see what I did later. I'm gonna do a live example, not so live because I did it live before, but I took a big screenshot so that they don't wanna really play with live ammo here, if uh, you know what I mean. You don't. Things, things go wrong when you're on the internet on a live event. So I took a nice big screenshot, but you're going to get to see exactly what I'm talking about and kind of what I've, what I've created. And I think it's an amazing starting point for anybody. I don't think it's the end point for anybody. I think everybody can take this and try it once, probably going to make a couple tweaks. And then as you do it more and more and more, you'll learn some amazing things that work really well for your particular industry or company, or maybe it would work good for everybody. And it's a great idea. That's, uh, that's, if that happens, please share it. Shoot me an email and say, hey, Josh, I found this really cool thing. Where you did this, I did that, and it's better. So, um, cascade of prompts. So, first is pulling the general details from the RFQ. Um, and then, as you're going to see, I do keep searching, keep searching, because sometimes ChatGPT doesn't give you the best the first time, and you say, do it again. And then it gives you something that's like, oh, that's a little bit better. And then say, do it again. And then it's like, okay, everything I asked for is now amazingly in one nice little uh, prompt, you know, uh, answer. So, next, we're going to locate the scope of work on the, you know, give us the page range, give me a detailed summary. Um, you, know, you probably are going to always want to read through the entire scope of work, right? But it's nice to have a detailed summary in the beginning, especially if you're doing kind of a, a bid, no bid. Maybe, you know, and, and that's another set of prompts that you can kind of work through, say, go through this RFQ, here's what we want. You know, we want it to be in Massachusetts. We want it to be cybersecurity. We want it to be, you know, so you throw all of your specific, specific requirements for a bid, and then you say, does this meet our, our selection requirements? And then ChatGPT can uh, send it out. And sometimes they'll say, I don't know, the RFQ didn't say. But it's better than you reading through the whole RFQ to find that out. Submission requirements. So formatting, page limits, we all know what those are. You know, got to be 11 point font, double space, can't, can't exceed 13 pages, that kind of stuff. Um, evaluation metho methodology, selection factors. So you always want to know what the KO, the, the contract officer on the buying side, uh, is looking at. So if, if that data is in the RFQ, you want to pull that out and know about it real quick. You know, are they, um, are they looking for, uh, you know, that the best price? Are they looking for the most robust solution? You know, so sometimes that data is in there. And then uh, just generally asking ChatGPT, is there any other relevant information that I didn't hit on that you think I should know? And that could be pretty powerful. Um, and you could even ask anything else, anything else, anything else. It's a robot, so you can kind of be like a, you know, four-year-old kid to it and just say anything else a bunch of times and just see what it comes up with. That's the whole staging of the project. Uh, we're going to also go into the writing of the proposal, and that's going to be kind of in, the, in another section there. But the cascade of prompts is going to continue. We're going to ask it to draft an outline and a checklist based on everything. So the cool thing about ChatGPT being conversational is like every time you ask a question, it's taking into account not only what you gave it to train it on uh, or learn, but it also is thinking through the conversation. So if it pulled the summary together, you can say uh, you could you could say item number two that you brought up in that summary, expand on it. You know, and, and do it in a thousand words, and it'll it'll do that. You can so it, it, it the whole conversation continues, and Chad GPT has a perfect memory of everything to that moment. 
uh, that's happened in that conversation. So drafting an outline in the checklist based on everything you've just gone through, approach to fulfill the project requirement. So you've asked it, what are the project requirements? How are they gonna be evaluating? Now you can ask it, okay, what's this really smart approach that would make sense? Or, you know, and then you can also poke into that as well. <laughs> There's so many questions coming in. I'm gonna get to those in a minute, okay? Um, outline and draft the technical approach. Um, so that's kind of just executive summary technical approach. You, you could just ask it, okay, to, to give you a general outline. And this is where the handoff kind of happens. Um, you can you can ask GPT to keep on going, you know, write that out. I love that outline, turn it into a narrative. Um, and then you can take that and make your own adjustments using your industry knowledge. Um, and then even, this is one thing I chose to go really deeply into because I found an RFQ that was amazing for this, cost buildup factors. Um, so I, what you're going to see is, is pretty amazing. It um, basically gets you a bottom line price that you're going to want to beat in order to be competitive. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. Uh, let's jump right in. Um, let's do that. Let me shoot over here. So before I get into this, let me just answer some really quick questions. Um, Leah asks, talking about confidentiality, controlled unclassified information concerns. Yeah, obviously that's all stuff that you're going to want to be um, very careful and sensitive about. Um, ChatGPT has a lot of verbiage that you can go in and read about um, how they handle the data that you input in there. Um, but yeah, you don't want to you don't want to step in it by putting classified documents through here for sure. Um, how much information do you think you actually have to provide? Um, that's a good question. The more information, the better. Um, you can provide, and, and you'll kind of see what I what I did in in, in, a, in a minute. Um, in this example, but yeah, the, the more the better. Um, sometimes, I mean, ChatGPT can only take in so much information just by rule. Um, they Otherwise, one person could just say, hey, I'm gonna give you a, a billion pages of this for you to train and nobody else in the world would be able to use GPT for a while. Um, so they have limits there. And some, what that does is it makes it so that maybe sometimes you'll, if you have a, you know, you'll, you'll kind of learn the sweet spot, but maybe sometimes you just wanna pull this, the scope of work or the statement of work or, or whatever out and only train it on that. Um, or maybe there's you can section it out and, and train it on that. So as far as the, the information you feed it, it's uh, that's something you'll kind of learn as you go. How and where does it get the pricing information from? So Prashant, we will go into that. Um, and if they say this such as pricing, we're gonna go into the pricing later. So if after I cover that, you, you may have some questions. Um, And yeah, if you have questions, I'll, I'll be happy to answer them. But yeah, let's continue. Let's go, let's dig in. Um, so this is what I call the important prompts playbook. And this is kind of a little bonus um, out of this uh, that I'm gonna share with you. So all of these prompts I created um, to kind of take you down a sequence. And this is what I referred to earlier. I think everybody on this call can take this and try it with a, their next proposal. And as you're doing that, you're probably gonna say, oh, I don't wanna change, I wanna change this to that and that to this and add a couple more items that I wanna ask it for. And, Stuff like that. So the very first one is all the following details that relate to the federal RFQ solicitation at the given link. And this is obviously where you drop in that link. Um, and then here are the variables that we're asking for: project title, RFQ number, uh, who's the issuing agency, release date, closing date, point of contact, period of performance. So all of the really general details. And this is almost like a test, a feel for how GPT is going to be interacting with this. And it's almost like you're calibrating in a way. So it's, it's asking the, the basic stuff first. Um, and this is where I say, keep searching the document. Oh, and another thing is, I like to give it um, specifics. If, if, I, if I want the output in a certain way, you need, then I need to communicate that to GPT. Otherwise, it's just going to output it however it wants. So I said, if the answer is not found, there's just insert nothing found. So some, sometimes GPT will try to be a good, good boy and put something in there when nothing is even on the RFQ. And you don't want that. That's all bad information, right? So this is that exact first prompt. I dropped a, uh, a link in there. You can see I went. You can't really share the link from Sam or wherever you get that oppor opportunity because that's behind a login. Um, so GPT isn't a person that can have a login and all that stuff. So you have to download it and drop it somewhere like Google Drive and make sure it's uh, shared and all this stuff. So that's a little bit of a learning curve, but not too hard to get through. Um, there's the link, it does it. Um, you can see a couple of these project title not found. That, that should be found. The release date and the closing date not found. Okay, so we have uh, the email and the name of the KO, that's nice. Uh, period of performance information, payment terms, some, some stuff is really good there. Um, I asked it to keep searching, try again. And it found a couple more details. Um, project title was still not found, but it found the reference number this time. Release date and all this, that still wasn't found. Sometimes it's just doesn't find it. You got to go in there, in there and find it. Anyway, sometimes it's not in there. 
you just need to go to the SAM record. It's in there. Um, so next, we're going to ask it for the page range of the statement of work, which is this one right here, the second prompt. So we're kind of just going to dig into what's this project all about. And you can probably tell bid, no bid. That's kind of what, what we're thinking right now. You downloaded the RFQ, so obviously there's some interest. Now we're going to now we're going to really dig in and see, okay, what is this project about? And this is where you could probably add a couple things, like if you only operate in Minnesota, put something in there on this template that says, is this project in Minnesota? Yeah, something like that. That's a very generic example, but you, you understand what I mean. Um, so now, here we go. It says page 12 of 91, uh, from page 5 to 12. There you go. So it gives that answer. And then the detailed summary, you can see it grabs the headers right out of the uh, RFQ, which is kind of nice. And don't have time to read through all this, so I'm kind of going to zoom through it. Um, I said keep searching. Which is something I really keep like I like to do, and uh, I'm sure with the I think the output's a little bit different, so there's um, a little bit more information, and uh, so that's good. Now we're going to move on to um, I think I may have added something in there. This is a um, if you want to okay yeah yeah yeah. So if the last response was weak, then you can pull the the actual SOW out of the RFQ and upload that separately, and then here's a prompt for that specific situation. Uh, but we'll, we'll keep moving. You have a detail, you have details relating to the submission requirements, such as the format, address, document type, our documents, page limitations, blah, blah, blah. Um, Did you find it? Okay, so here we are. So give the details. Let's see if I could zoom this a little bit and maybe put it over there because I have notes. There we go. So, um, so here is inspection and acceptance, delivery. So it pulled some of that out. And if there's anything that in here that you want to know specifically that it didn't pull, you can always say, you know, let's say, okay, um, what's the, that one? Um, got a little bit, <laughs> went a little bit sideways there. Okay, here we go. So yeah, you ask it that. I think I'm, I may not have run that through it. So next up, we're just going to skip that. But yeah, as I was saying, if, if page limitations, you feel like, yeah, that ought to be on this RFQ. And you can, and it, does, and it says I didn't, that it didn't find anything. You just say, hey, did you find any page limitations? I don't see that on there. And it'll run another search and hopefully find it this time. It's, uh, GPT has actually gotten a lot more conversational lately where it will come back to you and ask a question and say, you know, I didn't see any page limitations, but I saw this. Do you want me to search for that? And then you say yes, and then it does it, um, which is kind of cool. It's getting more proactive. All right, so next we're going to say, I think I skipped a couple here, but this next one is going through evaluation methodology, selection factors, all that stuff. Um, did you find any other relevant information that would be helpful? Blah, 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 blah. So I skipped over those. We don't have all day here, but the next one that I go into is act as a professional government co contractor proposal writer. Um, that frames the situation or the um, who ChatGPT is, is supposed to kind of put that hat on and act as. You can do that in all sorts of ways, but in this way, we want to kind of set the context that way. So act as a proposal writer and draft an outline and a checklist to successfully plan out the proposal writing process for this solicitation. So certainly crafting a blah, 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 and then it gives the, ex the executive summary, project, technical approach. Um, and it is, you can see it bullet points them. I think, yeah, you can, you can say, take the bullet points away and, and write them as a narrative and go into each detail on each one because this isn't a whole lot, but this gives you a, a, kind of an overview. And then this is kind of cool. It, it actually drafted a checklist for the proposal writing. Review the RFQ, identify the inventory. So a lot of this it actually brought in just from outside knowledge of general proposal writing uh, methodology. So that's there. But at the same time, there should be some areas in here that are specific to that RFQ because we've been talking about it at that point. Again, I asked it, you know, act as a professional uh, proposal writer, draft an outline of the solicitation, or they wrote the solution approach to fulfill the project requirement. Um, use the link below to learn the details about my company and blah, blah, blah. And I gave it more, some more areas where I said, um, areas that don't line up well, put the term low confidence in there. So you can kind of flag them and say, not a good match on these areas from the RFQ over to my company's capabilities. And I just grabbed Steel Toad. Um, I just grabbed them because I came across them and I like their name and they seem to kind of do what they do. So if you know anybody at Steel Tone, you could tell them, hey, I heard about you the other day on, on this, uh, this webinar event thing. But so what it did was it used Link Reader, a uh, plugin, and it went to this link. And I could have also given a specific link to their services page. Um, but what it did is it took, it, it read through that site, and scraped it and, and read it, became an instant expert at it, then cross-reference 
with the RFQ and took the site data and RFQ and then it married them together and said high confidence on cybersecurity, high confidence on certifications that are compliant. So the components of the RFQ are over here and then there's these high confidence matches. This blog insight, I think it reversed it there and, um, and it looks like it actually reversed it. So I would even give this a prompt and say, you know, no, you did that wrong. I want the RFQ, I want to make sure the website matches over the RFQ, you did it backwards, that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, that comes to the end of this. And yeah, so many questions, this is awesome. Um, let's start there. So hey Samuel, uh, I assume that different people generate different prompts, but theoretically could two different people unrelated and unknowing of one another generate the exact same output? Possibly, um, the outputs tend to be a little bit different each time. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're going after an opportunity and so is a competitor and you're both um, on this call and you're using the same template here, um, you'll probably use a, a prompt the first time just as it is here, just to see what happens and the output's gonna be very similar. But as you evolve your prompt and kind of tailor it to your company and get better and better and better, and you're also gonna have just kind of a, a personal working knowledge that grows on how to interact with ChatGPT better, um, and then your competitor will as well, and you'll kind of start to diverge from, from that point. Um, are you using uh, custom instruction? Uh, if so, what information do you include? Custom instruction, custom instruction. So I don't know what that term means. Um, if so, what information do you include? I just include the information from the RFQ, and I am using these prompts that I wrote with my hands. Um, so hopefully, um, Lennon, if that doesn't answer your question, feel free to kind of get kind of on back. Um, and ChatGPT Enterprise restricts the prompts entered from being used for training. That avoids the risk of IP being released to others. Enterprise costs more than the $20. Oh, okay. Maybe they bumped the price up. I just went on and checked the other day. That's that's what I'm paying. I'm realizing now that maybe they increased the price, but I locked in a $20 rate, you know, months back sometime last year. So um, yeah, so that's pro. Um, is there, maybe there's a greater um, tier now. I'm not sure, but yeah, you should. When you go to openai.com and start looking at the ChatGPT, it'll have the, the plans. Um, there's also API capability, which is really cool. I use the API capability with a lot of my custom built software for what, what we do with GSA and stuff. So um, that's really helpful. Um, enterprise version is not the same as the personal account. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just use the personal account for me and I do the $20 so that I can do that. If you're going to use it across an enterprise, you, I mean, you can you can get create one account and have a team all log in and use it. That's you know, totally fine. But if, if that starts to have it where everybody's stepping on each other's toes trying to get to it and, and it's causing problems, enterprises, <laughs> as it always is, very much more expensive. Um, thanks, Prashant, for that for that note. Making a, a go no go decision, it's uh, it's going to be a lot more insightful um, and quicker. I think I think it really shines in that context. You're right. Um, so yeah, and Caesar, thank you so much for all of the kind of like that helping out with that information. That's that's great. Um, now we're going to switch over to um, strategy and building out that cost. I told you earlier that that's a, an area that I kind of was like, this is a perfect RFQ, and I couldn't uh, couldn't resist the temptation to dive into that a little bit. So um, the first one here, we went over the outline. Now the proposal writing. So um, write a detailed summary of the scope of work. Okay, actually, backing up a minute. In this case, this was a I can't even remember several hundred page RFQ, I think. Um, the scope of work, no, it was like 92 pages, but it, that was a little bit past the threshold. And ChatGPT kind of stopped somewhere in the middle. Um, and I wanted to make sure when I was dealing with the specific scope of work or the statement of work that I had the entire picture, you know, that ChatGPT app rather had the whole picture and it didn't stop short and miss out on all this good data or this good information about the project underneath. So I specifically went to that. I went to that PDF. I took the, uh, you know, I, I removed all the other pages and just made a, the, you know, whatever, 12 page uh, statement of work. Um, I actually ran it through an OCR and just to get the text. And then I created a prompt, which um, should, which is in here um, somewhere. Is it this moderate? I can't remember where it is, but it should be in here. And I just said, write a detail, write a summary of the scope of work. If the different categories are given, estimate the hourly rate, um, give key advice to prepare a solution. So you are the, you know, the, the intelligent being that knows the solution well, but ChatGPT can kind of get, get you started. Write these details out to the maximum word count you are allowed in a response. So that was just me kind of saying, I want you to be long-winded here. Um, and then below that, I just entered the text that I told you about. I OCR'd it and I just got the text and dropped it in here. So here's the SOW text. There we go. 
all that. You can see labor category descriptions were included. That's cool. All right, so here's the scope of work. Like I asked, very important, moderately important, and other details. We didn't highlight that. So it's uh, actually government strategy and framework. Here's the summaries that it gave. It gave the labor categories and powers. Um, here's the moderately important, which I'll just kind of skip over for time, but I really want to go into this full part. Financial estimation. So it, it went on the web. It, it used those plugins and did some web research and said, okay, in this context, a program manager, I would expect it or estimate it to be 85 an hour. Business analyst, 75 an hour. Some of you, I'm sure, are balking at that, saying it's too high or too low. I, I have so many customers that are in such a crazy swing of price ranges that this, I can tell you, are these are pretty low, pretty much like mid-range. Maybe bump them up 20 bucks an hour, and that's maybe the going rate nowadays. Maybe a little bit on the high side, actually. But yeah, like these are... A, this is a pretty decent estimation. I think they go to like monster.com or something. I don't know. But um, it, it pulls it and then it gives a calculation. Now, I wanted it to go all the way further and give me the actual bottom line price. Take these estimations and uh, take these, uh, you know, this data that the government gave uh, in that RFQ saying we estimate there's going to be a 2,000 hour in the base year, the base period, uh, option one, 2,000 hours. So they gave this data in the RFQ. And now we know um, we have an estimation of the hourly. Um, so, and then it gave that calculation. Here's how you calculate it. So I just went ahead and say, you know, perform that dollar, total dollar value calculation you gave me. So it did it. Um, it said, here are the labor categories and the, the prices. Um, here's the estimated hours. ChatGPT kind of does this sometimes where I kind of just wanted to tell me this number and it, but it, especially with math problems, it tells you how to get, it, it came up with its number or the came up with its answer. Um, so here we go. Grand total, 425,000. For them, for the program manager one, blah, blah, blah. So it keeps going. Okay, here we go. About 1.7 million is the estimated for the whole project. There you go. And it has all the breakdowns all the way up. So this is pretty cool. This is probably stuff you all would be doing um, on your own to come up with your cost estimation. And uh, and now you have one that's somewhat generic and you can kind of apply it and say, okay, this is, I'm going to take this and can consider it the baseline. Now, if I want to be competitive and I want to drop it 5%, what's my margin? There you go. So um, I also love this feature about GBT. Build a table and give the totals for the best period and for the base period and all the options. Here are the labor categories, the rate, the base period, and here is the. So it builds these nice tables that you can copy. You, you can select it all, copy it, paste it right into Excel. It's, it's wonderful. Um, and then it gave you a little uh, kind of a, a summary down there. And there you go. So that's the end of the cost estimate, estimation table. I hope that's helpful. <laughs> How, how's that landing on everybody? <laughs> Crickets. So, all right. So, that's everything for the presentation. So, awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Good. Good. I'm, I'm glad that was helpful. Um, I could sit here for three hours and, and go through it, and would still be sitting at the, the tip of the iceberg. Um, but the, so, so there's a lot to, to do with this. But I think the, the goal here today is just to kind of wet your whistle and kind of let you see the power, and hopefully get your thoughts. I, you know, everybody has, is coming from a different business with different processes and everything and you're hopefully taking you know scratching down some good notes on how you can take this and improve what you do and go go beat out Lockheed for that big contract great great so um we're going to transition now to what i promised before um but the final two items we have a, a little you know all, yeah, all uh you know to be, to be um, transparent a little pitch about what we do um gsa wise and with our accelerator plan and then gonna go into the free gift which uh is I think you're gonna I think you're gonna really like it. If you're here today, then it's very much on this topic. Um, so are you all happy with the amount of federal sales that you're getting currently? Happy with them? You want to improve them or not yet? Yes or no question. Um, so I see a big no. All bold. Gina, Gina's Gina's going with all bold there. I like that. <laughs> Some more bold from Gregory. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of transition over here to uh to Carlos. He's gonna take over for a minute. Um, but to kind of get things going, um Carlos, just to remind y'all, he's our BD manager. Um, he's here at GSA Focus. Um, he's going to give you kind of a brief rundown of what we do at GSA Contracts. Um, he's also going to go into what we found to be the five disciplines that uh, basically create successful government contractors and how we've taken that knowledge in the 18 or so years I've been doing this and turned it into the GSA Accelerator program. So let me turn it over to Carlos. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear awesome. me? Okay. Awesome. Okay, so if you can, then everyone can hear me okay. All right, well, yeah, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for, um, thank you all for coming. Uh, we made it this far is because you're absolutely interested in succeeding within the government contracting world. And I know we're running short on time, so I'm gonna try to speed through uh, the little pitch that we have. 
Um, so yeah, if you're here, it's because you're probably hungry for those sales and uh, you want to get some of that sweet revenue that goes to GSA, but you're probably somewhere in the middle. Uh, you don't have a GSA contract yet, or uh, you don't know where to start, or you're probably half attempted to capture contracts, but haven't been able to land a single one. Um, so let's talk about how we can help place your business uh, within that sweet pool of 40 plus billion dollars a year that that is uh, uh, that is GSA. So you're about to discover the secret uh, to winning million, multi-million dollar federal contracts four times faster while bypassing the headache and the red tape that other small business owners have to go through when trying to get their GSA contracts. So there are two ways to get a GSA contract. Uh, there's the old way and the GSA focused way. With the old way, notice how common the rejections are and uh, they slow down the process when you do it yourself and are basically the reason uh, that this stalls indefinitely for many businesses. So if you're going to gain access to that multi-million dollar contracts opportunities in GSA and quickly, then GSA focus will get you there fast and with favorable terms. So let's talk about the GSA accelerator now. For nearly 18 years, as Josh mentioned, we have gained insight into the five disciplines that make businesses a successful government contractor. And that's what we're going to show you right now. So if you can master these five disciplines, then you will win more with less effort. Um, so we're gonna jump right into it. And the first one is our Fed funnel. This is an amazing tool that streamline and organize your capture management process or bidding processes. Our web tool handles everything related to bidding and uh, first it brings thousands and, uh, of federal and state opportunities from GSA and SAM.gov and several others and then it filters them for you to review a short list of curated bids just for you. And this is called your watch list. For the bids you want to pursue, just simply move them to the pipeline to manage the proposal writing process. It is a CRM that's built specifically for government contract and it has many automations built in. The second one is our proposal writer support. That's a uh, mastery of the proposal is a must in GSA and is the most important discipline, actually. So our approach uh, with this is that we build your, propo pro your proposal writing skills while winning contracts in the process. Using ChatGPT is a very powerful tool, but if you don't have the strategy and the uh, fundamentals here, it won't be as helpful. So you will have support for, uh, from proposal writers for two projects each month for a duration of three months. And by the end of this period, you will have a mature proposal library that works for your business and you can start doing the uh, capturing of these contract opportunities in house. The next one is our federal brand audit, uh, showing the government buyers that you speak their language is a must if you want to win. So we complete a full audit of your website, capability statements, and the any other market material that you have. And these adjustments, they work to build more trust in the eyes of the federal buyers. It may seem minor, but try to, try to think about how many, how many of you judge a vendor by their website. So if you don't, you don't buy products from Amazon if they don't have any picture, right? So federal buyers are no different and, uh, in following these trust cues. The next one is our active marketing. Uh, this involves researching the agencies that typically buy what you sell. And then we, pre we prepare a plan uh, to actively pursue the decision makers of, to create inroads. This is a long-term approach to winning contracts. And the last is our coaching sessions feature. And uh, our team coaching sessions are held twice a month. As made any business, constant feedback is necessary and is vital if you want to continuously grow as a manager and improve your processes. In these sessions, we usually talk through strategies, keep you on track and over the long haul. We also talk through challenges you're facing along the way and the problem solve to walk through them. And uh, yeah, so these are the five disciplines that you must master to win the in the government contracting world. Again, it's bids management, proposal writing, brand, active marketing, and coaching for constant improvements. If you can master these five disciplines, then you will bring in better opportunities and increase uh, your win rates. Mm -hmm.